Hello, I'm Dr. Phil Busey. I will present for identification set two containing 14 species of native Florida plants. In alphabetical order by scientific names, these are the 14 species of Florida native plants seen by students of Miami-Dade College Kendall campus native plant identification class. Two species are flagged because of transfers from another genus. Dombrinea coriacea lancewood was formerly in Nectandra. In fact, it was also sometimes reported in the genus Ocotea. It is now in uh, Dombrinea. And in addition, author uh, Gil Nelson of the Trees of, of Florida had reported that he did not consider this to be a native uh, Florida plant. However, I will defer to both the Plant Atlas of Florida as well as the Institute for Regional Conservation, both of which say this is a native species. In addition, Quadrella jameosensis, Jamaica caper, was transferred from the genus Caparis, and it has also sometimes been incorrectly reported as a different species, but it is Quadrella jameosensis. Another um, flag here is that the Sephora tomentosa species necklace pod has a non-native ecotype that is sometimes propagated and used as if it were native. The first species we will consider is Calicarpa americana beautyberry. This is an attractive plant with opposite simple leaves that have uh, serrate or more often crenate margins, prominent nerves, and uh, light violet flowers. Here are the flowers of beautyberry. The leaves are soft and hairy. They're covered by stellate hairs. This is a leaf rubbing of Calicarpa americana, showing you uh, the crenate margins of the leaf. The purple fruit of Calicarpa americana beautyberry are attractive. They are purple and they are eaten by birds and other wildlife. There is also a white fruited variety of Calicarpa americana beauty berry. Next species is Cocoloba diversifolia pigeon plum in the parking lot of Miami Dade College Kendall campus. It has a bark that is often sculpted and multicolored. The specific epithet diversifolia is due to the diverse foliage of different widths and lengths. Sometimes the leaves on the same species can be very diverse. These young leaves of Cocoloba diversifolia are bronze in appearance. The leaves are alternate and simple. Here is a much longer leaf on the same species at Royal Palm Hammock in Everglades National Park, pigeon plum. A sister species, Cocoloba uvifera sea grape, is one of the most distinctive native Florida species. It has these grape-like clusters that are edible when they are mature. The leaves are flat and plate-like. Sometimes the leaves are orbicular and sometimes they're reniform or kidney-shaped. It too has an interesting bark. Conocarpus erectus green buttonwood is shown as a row of trees on um, 
the avenue in Miami Shores. Here is a specimen of Conocarpus erectus that was collected in 1841 in Key West. The leaves are elliptical, they are alternate and simple, and uh, the buttonwood name obviously comes from the button-like fruits that are some kind of compound fruit. The leaves are pointy, acute, and here's a close-up. The trunks of older green buttonwood trees often twist like snakes. And the scars from twigs and branches that have come off over the years often form blackish areas. The base of the green buttonwood leaf is interesting because in the axles of the veins are small holes that are called domatia uh, with evoking the possibility that they might be homes for little animals. In addition, at the um, petiole are two glandular areas. Dombernea coriacea lancewood is a native species with long leaves, lanceolate, Here's a specimen from 1895 that was collected near Palm Beach, Florida. The lancewood has an interesting petiole. The leaf stalk or petiole at the base of the leaf has two little twists. It curls up and then it curls down. There's another example of the petiole of lancewood. The flower has six petals. It is attractive. There is a close-up of the lancewood flower. Hamelia patens firebush is a very easy to grow native plant in the coffee family. It has simple opposite leaves and it has a tubular corolla that is orangish red or red. It's attractive to wildlife, including butterflies. And there's a close-up of the corollas. A small shrubby variety is probably an introduced species or subspecies from northern South America and would not be considered a native Florida ecotype. Ilex vomitoria has a name that's hard to forget. It is called Yaupon. It has smallish leaves, a half to maybe one inch long, that are alternate and simple. The desired use of this little holly species in the landscape is as a closely trimmed hedge or almost a ground cover. Neulenbergia capillaris muley grass is one of two fairly common native Florida grasses that are used in landscaping. It has a panicle which is purplish. A panicle is a type of inflorescence which is branched two or more times. Muley grass. There it is growing on Miami-Dade College Kendall campus. And there it is in a natural area in Southwest Florida. Psychotria nervosa wild coffee has shiny leaves it has simple opposite leaves. There's a leaf rubbing showing you the nerves of this species. The veins or nerves are, are not um, raised, but they're sunken. 
or depressed into the surface of the leaf. Psychotria nervosa, wild coffee, very easy to grow, tolerates a little bit of shade, is attractive to wildlife, the flowers are attracting this honeybee. It produces bright red fruit that can cons be consumed by animals. And it's a home for many species of animals. Quadrella jamea census, Jamaica caper, is pretty distinctive because of its rounded, uh, smallish leaves that have silvery scales underneath. There are the leaves again. The flowers are attractive and fragrant. The uh, cor corolla is violet, and most of what you see are the long exerted stamens. Jamaica caper. Here is how it grows along a, a beach area in Cramden Park. And here is how it can be maintained by the Florida Department of Transportation alongside Interstate 595. This is a um, method of cultivation I really don't approve of. A solid monoculture of the same species, Jamaica caper, is being grown pruned square as a board. It's not the way I like to see native plants grown. Sephora tomentosa necklace pod is a native Florida species with some ecotypes from uh, other parts of its range, not from Florida. One of the botanical varieties that is shown here, while it is Sephora tomentosa, is probably nat not native to the Florida environment. This is the type of Sephora tomentosa or necklace pod that you will normally see in Florida and that is native. Toxicodendron radicans poison ivy is native but not nice because many people have a severe rash should they touch this plant. It is trifoliolate. I don't know if you want to call that pinnately compound or palmately compound. The middle leaflet has a petiole yule or a leaflet stalk that is longer than the uh, ones on the side. So perhaps it should be considered uh, pinnate. It has a look that is easily recognized in the woods. It should be avoided. It should not be allowed to touch your skin if you're sensitive. The leaflets are serrate or more often deeply lobed. The outside edges tend to be more deeply lobed than the inside, which gives it a particular look. This poison ivy plant is growing and attaching itself to a ficus tree using its aerial roots. Trifoliolate poison ivy. The other important native Florida grass that's used in landscaping is Trypsocum dactyloides eastern gamma grass. This forms a clump. It's interesting because its flowers are unisexual with the female flowers on the bottom, the male on the top. Here you can see the anthers that contain the pollen. And in this close-up of the spike-like inflorescence, near the top again are the purplish anthers, and at the bottom are the stigmas, which are the female receptive structures. Close-up shows the stigmas coming out of 
spikelets that are embedded in a corky rachis. The rachis disarticulates, it breaks into little pieces, each containing a viable ovary. And this type of inflorescence is spike-like because it is uh, unbranched or essentially unbranched. In this photograph, it is probably Trypsocum dactyloides in the back, and the plant in the foreground is probably a different species of Trypsocum, Trypsocum floridanum, which should be a Florida gamma grass. The last species in this set is Xanthoxylum fagara, wild lime. It has alternate pinnately compound leaves and the flowers are small and greenish. With a name like wild lime, it may not be surprising that this is in the citrus family along with oranges. One of the more notable characteristics about the leaf of Xanthoxylum fagara is the rachis, which is winged, and even the petiole is winged. Take a close look. One thing you might not see, but you might feel and then see, are the sharp thorns that this plant has. This completes a presentation across two sets of 25 Florida native plant species. Of these, eight are either palms, grasses, or a pinus slash pine species. The remaining 17 species are distributed in 16 genera. It's hard to train our brains to remember this many items but we can group them and that helps us learn them better. There are different types of leaf arrangement, alternate, opposite, and whorled, and there are different types of leaf division, such as simple, pinnate, and bipinnate that we have seen among the dicots. We did not yet see a palmately compound dicot. Among these combinations of leaf arrangement and leaf division, there are some groups like um, bipinnate alternate and world simple that have only a, one species. So those are really distinctive and we don't need to look further to know how to identify them. The most complicated and difficult group would be the alternate simple leaf plants. We have in the alternate simple leaf plants seven genera with eight species. How can we tell them apart? Let's look in more detail and remember what we saw. Among eight species of alternate simple-leaved plants, when we look in detail, we will be able to remember the distinctive leaf characteristics. In the top center is Chrysobalanus ikako, the cocoa plum. It has these very roundish, ovate uh, leaves, uh, maybe two inches long, shiny. The genus Cocoloba has two species of interest, Cocoloba diversifolia on the upper left. That is the pigeon plum. It has ovate to lanceolate leaves anywhere from four inches to maybe eight inches long, shiny, and it's got a distinctive bark. On the upper right is Cocoloba uvifera, sea grape. It has big plate-like leaves, orbicular or even reniform, stiff and leathery. On the right center is Conocarpus erectus, green buttonwood. Its leaves are elliptical and pointed and there are small holes called domatia in the axles of the lower leaf surface veins. In the lower left is Dambernia 
coriacea. That is the lance wood. It has long lanceolate leaves that are not really pointed, but they're um, acute. And uh, it has that double twist on the petioles. That's distinctive among this group. And then the lower right is the ilex with a very uh, memorable uh, specific epithet, uh, vomitoria. That is the yaupon. It has the smallest leaves of this group, only a half to maybe one inch long, and they are typically um, uh, have margins uh, that are, are distinctive, and it grows really low. The two at the bottom are species that have a lighter underside of the leaf. Quadrella jameacensis, Jamaica caper, has more of a silvery look underside. And um, the leaf uh, tip is sometimes retuse, it, it comes in. And uh, it, 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 it's not a big tree. Whereas the lower right, Quercus virginiana, live oak, is a monstrous tree with a huge trunk and outstretched limbs. So that's how we tell the eight species with alternate simple leaves. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And let's go on to the next set.